Are you yearning to wake up each morning and ignite a new meaning and purpose in life and beyond? Welcome, everyone. I'm Michael McGinnis, an award-winning author, speaker, and educator on human potential, and your host on You Can Do It, inspiring growth, igniting potential. Life presents us with challenges that serve as catalysts for growth. The pivotal question is, how do we respond to these challenges, or better yet, opportunities? Do we adopt a victim mindset or rise to become victors? Our goal here is to guide and inspire you to master the most amazing journey you have your life you can do it starts now hi everybody michael mcginnis here how are you hey, i had a couple of days off for a great holiday hope you had the same thing so we've been on the abc model we've worked through the abcs we've identified the unhealthy beliefs and now it's time to correct those and again this is a point of which you probably want to uh, look into the use of a professional counselor or a therapist. They're well trained in the case. They're very deep rooted types of issues and things to be able to help to resolve. The focus here is obviously now on healing by, and the process of changing the unhealthy beliefs into more positive healthy beliefs. And that's done in part by the use of affirmations. Affirmations is how we're going to reprogram our subconscious. Deep down there is where our unhealthy beliefs and things reside. So, for example, in my case, I dealt with my core, one of my core issues. The fact is, is that I, I felt I was not worthy. I believed I was not worthy. And obviously, big implications in a lot of aspects of my life when you feel that you're unworthy. So in order to correct that, the use of affirmations uses what's referred to as I am statements. And there's actually one form of it. There's many of them that you can utilize. It's called a release statement. And so in my case, it would be, I release the belief that I am unworthy. When the truth is, I am a good person. I am worthy. And I am learning how to like and love myself just the way I am. So again, it's that type of a format, the original you know, I release the belief, that's your unhealthy belief, right? And then you transition it. What's the opposite? What's the goal? And you always put it in the I am statement. That means that you are talking about it as if it's now. And you're going to keep doing that. And then along with that, you'll be doing some other work and assignments. We'll talk about those to complement the affirmations to start developing that whole new mindset, attitude, and belief. And remember, that's the A that'll then influence our behaviors to be much more positive in scope and obviously lead to much better consequences in our life. Hope that helps. Looking forward to talking to you again soon. Have a great day. Hey, everybody. Michael McGinnis here with You Can Do It. Remember, this is all about you. This is about you developing your potential. So what we've been focusing on, if you recall last session, is the opportunity to start dealing with our personal growth, right? That stage of which we identify our own kind of issues that are holding us back from being happy, from joy, from having meaning purpose, and in particular, to lead us to where we become our full potential. So we talked about some of it. I talked a lot about my own experiences today. I am so fortunate today. I have a great guest. I'm going to introduce her in just a moment, uh, who's been a significant part of my healing and if my life. And so we're going to talk about that today specifically to what our focus is, that of affirmations. And the topic is, is changing our unhealthy beliefs into healthy beliefs, the power of affirmations. So without further ado, let me take a minute to introduce Candace, who you see here. Candace Wheeler, I discovered along my way years ago, you know, when I was going through a lot of my own personal growth, I was dealing with a lot of struggles and trials and tribulations. And in addition to my traditional counseling, I had discovered Candace. I call her my spiritual advisor. Why? Because she brings a gift of spiritual background and understanding. And along with that, some very practical tools and techniques that helped me to really be able to navigate my life at that time, recover and grow from the experience. And in particular of that is affirmations. And her unique focus of affirmations is an incredible help. And that's why I hope today you're going to learn 
how to really be able to create these affirmations to transition out those old unhealthy beliefs that are holding us back, creating those negative patterns towards positive, healthy beliefs. So without further ado, and you'll see the image here uh, of which this is Candice's website, CandiceWheeler.com. So without further ado, Candice, how are you? Oh, Michael, I'm so proud of you. Since the day that I met you, you have come so far. I'm very proud of you. Wow. I didn't anticipate that. What a wonderful thing to, to hear and acknowledge. But that's the power of, of what we each do, right? And now is that the gist of why I said is that why you want to go through these stages of growth. You've got to clean your own house before you can clean others. You Hi. help me clean yeah. my house. And the affirmations is about cleaning your mind, building a relationship with your mind that's positive and cleaning it out. I love it. And we'll be expanding. I, I so much look forward to your insight as it relates to the affirmations. And the beauty of it is that we're actually going to be utilizing the real affirmations that Candace prepared for guess who? Me. You know, when I was going through this, so you're going to see it, you know, you're going to see these things. These aren't made up conversations. These are the kinds of things that helped me to grow and Candace's own witness of that. And as I say, and it's the name of our podcast, if I can do it, you can do it too. And that's our focus here. So Candace, as we talk about this concept of affirmations, you know, and my view is, is I sort of uh, translate that to you know, I grew up in corporate America, so I, try, I had to try to find as an educator these sort of practical ways to explain things. And and the thing for me that uh, I had realized is, is that, or the analogy I like to use, is that when we're busy with a computer or an application on a phone or whatever, and it's not working, right? You know, very often it's a result of the fact that the program, which is developed by software, and the ingredient of software is code, right? People type it in code, you know, to sort of create the software package that creates the application. And so sort of the root cause of a lot of these problems is the fact that it has bad code. Well, I translate that. And I like that example is because we ourselves often have bad code in our okay. lives. And the bad code, as I see it, is, is the unhealthy beliefs that we have developed along the way, right? Life has a way of doing that. We all typically have them. A lot of it happened during the formative years, early on in our life. But regardless of when it is, we have that bad code. And what happens with bad code? It can help to produce bad results, right? Just like that computer program not working, we ourselves can work less and efficiently. And that was the example I shared last time is because because of what turned out to be the, the bad code, which is not worthy, that'll never amount to anything, was driving my behaviors that were consistent with the co consequence of, in my, that particular case, of frustration related to date, the inability to be able to date and work with women. In fact, this was a topic that Candace and I had worked on. And so... So you'll get a chance to see that. But first of all, you know, on that is, is uh, uh, when you think about this whole conversation, Candace and affirmations, you know, why, why do they work? Why do they work so well? And how do they work? Well, the, I was ready to tell you the benefits of affirmations. They work because that you have to keep them consistent, constant. But here's are the benefits of affirmations. Essentially, it's a form of being kind to yourself. You're reprogramming your subconscious. You're rewiring your brain. You're taking dominion over your mind, which is probably the most important thing. You actually become a witness to your mind and you're watching it. It builds reassuring relationships with your mind. It reduces anxiety and stress. It overcomes adversity, doubt, and fear. It recovers natural growth and expansion. It Can you believe this? It repairs limiting thoughts to healthy thoughts. It changes negative behavior to the superior behavior. It raises endorphins and creates happy feelings. It restores self-esteem, good feelings, and confidence. And it forms and builds new habits. It opens your heart. 
and ultimately shifts how you see yourself in the world. And the one last thing I just thought of this morning, it allows a whole new truth of identity. You change your identity from being, in your case, unworthy, which is small, and the identity changes to, here I am hosting a podcast. Wow, what a wonderful thing. And, and you know, I personally can agree to what you've said. I mean, this is... This is nothing less than a miracle. This is a major ingredient in our growth to be able to help us to really to be able to make this transition. If we were to choose, you know, just a few tools to help us go through the process of making changes in life, my own view is affirmations would be one of those tools that would raise near the top. Absolutely. I agree with you totally. And the release statements, finding a new truth recognizing and hearing yourself watching your mind enough so that you're recognizing a negative thought when it comes in so that you can stop it change it and find a truth that's positive and begin to say that affirmation so well, it's like opening your brain all day long and, and that's what's amazing right is is the really that's why i use an analogy of software you can reprogram ourselves. And that's what's amazing. And uh, amazing the the whole body of work, even in science today with neuroscience and stuff that, that that confirms that that we can change. And when we change and we do things like affirmations and meditations, we literally change the structure of our brain. That's right. And it changes the structure of your life when you change the structure of your brain because you're looking at a whole different point of view. You're, you're allowing your subconscious to see what you want and the pictures of what you want to be. And the subconscious begins to buy into that and it buys into it over and over and over again till the point that finally says the subconscious just kind of withers away. And the next thing you know, you're living what you want and that's happiness. And that's Outst being living. That's a Outstand. simple picture of it. Yes, it's powerful. It really is powerful. And that's why I want to get into the release sta release statements here. You had mentioned here and the power of those and what they actually look like so that people can begin to create these on their own or at least know, you know, the tool to utilize in this case. And and before I do, I just want to acknowledge one thing that you shared is, is that, uh, you know, from experiences it is also I'll be looking forward to bringing you back because it's not only just also the physical changes but where you've played an instrumental part of my life this is really within the spiritual aspect of it you know looking at my life is not just the physical part but really the energy and the vibration and all these other elements that that I discovered through my work with you that now I really resonate with. And that's even a new word in my vocabulary. So at some point, we'll be looking forward to having you back to sort of go in to explore some of the deeper aspects of, of our change. I look forward to that. Awesome. So release statements. Well, you know, shown here are the actual statements that- I love it. Uh, I love it. Just worked with me. Yes. And it was fantastic. <laughs> to see this is and so you know uh, can you explain a little bit more about these and then you've got the examples here talk through them and you know uh, why create them in this way and what's the impact of that okay well these are perfect examples i have them in front of me but there's two kind of release statements one is the belief i release the belief so that we our mind has a belief and by the way just to take it back a little bit the subconscious creates these negative thoughts to protect you as a child from experiences that you've been having so it's not that it's against you but it created to protect you but as we become older and and mature we don't need them anymore so we have to reprogram them so the first kind is the beliefs, which means we are going to be aware of what you're telling yourself. So you have to ask the question, what am I saying to myself? When you feel icky, ask yourself, what am I saying to myself? And get that clear in your mind. And then you come up with a truth. And the truth has to start with I am because it takes you in the present moment. The subconscious will not hear the past. It will not hear the future. And you're in the present moment so that you're saying, I am so very worthy. So in the case of this first one, 
you should the um the truth that you chose is I'm choosing to practice seeing all the wonderful possibilities for me and feeling happy and excited about them all. I mean, I can feel that excitement and so can your body. So every time you say that, your body feels that excitement and it becomes more and more familiar and more and more happy until it becomes a part of you. So the second kind of release statement are, are the judgments. And I have to tell you, I grew up judging myself, I, and most people do, and we, we judge other people. So whenever a judgment comes on, you will feel it because you'll feel icky again. You'll have this icky feeling, and you're going, okay, what's going on? What am I judging? Oh, I'm judging that I can't possibly be worthy enough to be loved, and that's what's in your release statement here. I forgive myself for judging myself as unworthy of being loved. So how I talk to people about this is putting their hands on their heart and literally, literally forgiving yourself. I forgive myself for judging myself as unworthy of being loved. And you can feel this, oh, wow, oh, you know, you've, you've got this empathy for yourself while you're doing that. And it feels wonderful. So then you have to figure out what the opposite of that judgment is. And so the release statement that we've got here is, I'm choosing to love myself completely so the perfect person will love me too. Well, didn't that make you feel good? Totally, didn't you feel good about that? So that's an example of release statements. Um, the judgments work with your heart the beliefs work with your head and there's no change without the heart. That has to be such an important part of it. So that's briefly release statements. Wow. I was, thank you so much. That was powerful. That really was a great way to explain it. And I remember you had shared that with me and it rekindled that whole conversation that you had. And I love how you really, shared about the, the two elements of it and really associating it to the head and the heart. I think that's fantastic. And, you know, as you were talking about, it reminded me is that, you know, in the beginning, you know, after we had these and there was my homework to now recite these to myself, it was tough at first. It was really tough at first because I, I guess I was so used to not believing it that my body was resisting it. And as a matter of fact, you know, at times I like, I just wanted to put this away yeah. and deal with that, it, you know, cause, cause it was, it, it was tough. Is that, does that, yeah. is that common? Some people put it away and they don't come back because <laughs> it's too hard to do. But the whole thing is, and what you're bringing up for me now is that how you use these is that you do it the very first thing in the morning and the last thing before you go to bed at night. And whenever you do something familiar, like whenever you brush your teeth, whenever you do the dishes, whenever you take a walk, you do those release statements. So you like drumming it in. But most people, because they're not used to that kind of a discipline, they go, oh, I, I don't want to do that. And I remember actually a client who didn't do that for like four weeks. And I finally got her to do it. And when she came back on the day that she had done it for for another like two, like a week or so, she said, oh my God, I wish I had been doing this the whole time because I think I've already changed. So it's it's like, I'm glad you brought up the resistance because it's totally there, but we can get over that by repeat, 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 repeat. If you choose to do that. And you know, I have a trick for you. Record your own voice doing those release statements. And you get in the car and it's time lost in the car and you're listening to your own voice telling you how worthy you are. You know what? It's going to work. It comes in and, and the subconscious hears it and goes, oh, okay. And it starts opening up and the subconscious starts opening and opening and opening until, as I said, all of the old stuff just withers away and your new identity is standing there. Wow. It, it's so well said, because to me, as it relates to growth, some things that you said is, is that ultimate growth is, is about changing behaviors, right? And But to do that, we've got to begin with within ourselves. And, and the first behavior 
that you learn to change is even the reciting of these yeah. affirmations to yourself. True. That's true. And maybe I should bring that in when I'm counseling. I should say, record it shows that it's hard to get going here. Yes. But you can trust yourself. And, and that's, it's, you know, that's bringing up devotion to yourself, having enough compassion for yourself to want to change, to put in the time and the effort. That's I, what. I, Spot on. Sorry, I, I, it was just, it, it It took the words right out of my mouth. It is, <laughs> you, it's that victor versus victim, yes, right? And that's how I translate. Intention, backed by your heart, by the desire yes. to grow, the desire to be all you can possibly be. Right, right. And it's like with anything in the growth process, you really have to want it. That's because right. your body's going to resist it because it's so used to being that way. And as I found for myself, I'll be the first to admit is, is I will listen to my own podcasts, right? <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it's a, it's what you just said. It's It really makes an impact. I said, wow, I said that? <laughs> you know? I say to me, remember when you said this and, and now I'm doing that? And I go, wow, <laughs> I don't remember that because it's so natural for you and I to share what we know but we forget what we share until we see it standing in front of us in the form of a client who's winning and feeling happy. That's outstanding. It really is. That's great. Well, we're closing in here. Any other words that you would like to share with respect to the whole concept of this part of growth, particularly with the affirmations? Yeah, I think. I would share the level of dedication that you bring into your own heart. And what's important is trusting the truth of your heart, because that's where the truths come from. You have to trust that you know what's right for you. It's not the counselor that knows what's right. It's you who knows the right what's right for you. And to speak from that place and to trust that strength and that intuition the other thing would be is that you have to be responsible for being um, a guardian of your mind. If you don't guard your mind, if you're not aware of what you're telling yourself, it's useless. So dedicate yourself to, to listening to your mind to being aware of what you're saying to yourself so that you can turn it around right on the spot. I've learned to do it as I'm walking across the street. It's, it's got to be a part of you. So every time you need a new truth, just, okay, what's the opposite of that? Okay, the opposite is I am worthy. Now, my thing, I was not good enough. So my affirmations were all, I am so good enough. I am intelligent. I am beautiful. I am worthy of being out in the world helping people. So it's constantly reminding myself. And I, I think the other one is um, being open to being grateful for your work for yourself. If you're grateful for what you're bringing to yourself, then that growth is much more celebratory. You, you, you're celebrating your win. You're celebrating you as a human being instead of being small. And in my case, really small <laughs> i used to be so small that i would stand in the corner of a party so celebrating you smiling first thing in the morning i am happy yay uh, gratitude is everything right i mean it's just like attitude it's it's fantastic there are so many gems that we could easily spend hours conversing and maybe over time we can and i really look forward to having you back on our show again and thank you so much Candice, for your time is and your my pleasure. And your experience is fantastic. So, ladies and gentlemen, Michael McGinnis here with You Can Do It. Hope you really enjoyed the show. We're going to continue this series with talking about the different tools for your personal growth and self discovery. And we'll reveal those and we'll have those conversations. But now you've got a structure in this particular case to know 
this thing called affirmations can be a significant positive element and tool and resource for you in your personal growth. Be sure if you have questions on this, look up Candice at CandiceWheeler.com. Consider as a resource, as I did, to be able to help and support you no matter what the type of growth or concern that you are experiencing in life. So ladies and gentlemen, until next time, remember you can do it. It's the most important part. You can do it. Believe that. That's the first belief I ask you to believe in is believe in yourself that you can change. We're all wired that way. We can. And I look forward to our next conversation. Love to you all, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. I'm Michael McGinnis, and you've been listening to You Can Do It, inspiring growth, igniting potential. Tune in every second and fourth Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Time on Transformation Talk Radio. As a recognized educator, author, and speaker on human potential, let's learn together how to make the most out of this life and to put a ding in your universe. This is the incredible journey of personal and spiritual growth, self-discovery, and enlightenment. For more information, visit growhumanpotential.com.